Welcome back to the Fierce Fish First Tech Challenge CAD Modeling Tutorial Series. Our goal in this series is to provide guidance in using Autodesk Inventor for First Tech Challenge. And in today's video, we are going to be looking at the 2D Modified tools. There are nine 2D Modified tools. Some of them you may never use, some of them you'll use all the time. So I have a bunch of situations set up that we are going to be uh, exploring with the Modify tools. So let's dive right into this. So the modify tools are located right here under the tab that says modify. So you see there are nine of them, like I said. And let's start with move here. When you click on move, a pop-up window is going to come here. And first it's going to want you to select the geometry that you want to move. So you can either, I have a rectangle here, so you can either select each individual line or you can click somewhere and drag to get the whole thing. And I'm not gonna worry about these right now. We'll talk about those next. And then you have to select the base point. And this is, let's say the point in reference that you wanna move. So let's say I wanted to move this in reference to this point. So now I am moving in reference to that corner point. And typically you would go to another point in your sketch. But the only other point I have is here, so I'm just gonna click in the center, and now you'll see that point is where I clicked the other point. So when you hit done, now that is officially moved. Let's undo that. So back in here, we're not gonna use copy because there's a separate tool for copy, so we're not gonna bother with that. Optimize for single selection, I'm not entirely sure what that does. I don't, not, I don't think it does anything that we're going to need to be worried about here, but precise input we're going to want. So let's select our geometry first. Select our geometry first. There. And let's select the precise input. So now, oh, we got to select the base point first, I'm sorry. So let's put that base point there, and let's put in our precise geometry. We can select the point on our coordinate plane that we want to move this to. So let's say I wanted to move it to 0 0.5, 0 0.5. You'll see now that point is located right where I put in the input. And I think I might have had a little typo. I'll have to look at that later. But it moved exactly where I asked of it to go. And then we're going to close oh, that. And that's basically the gist of the move tool. That's for precise movements. If you're not looking so precise, you can just do all of that. You can just do that as well. Now, let's go to the copy tool now. So I have a different rectangle here, and we're gonna wanna copy it. So what copy does in contrary to move is once we select our geometry and we select our base point, where we move it to, it's going to copy it, and then we can press done here. It's going to copy it instead of get rid of the, instead of move it completely. So this one, this rectangle is still here, but now we've added this one. So that can be very useful as well. So now we also saw in the copy tool, we have the precise input and optimize for single selection. You can do the precise input as well. That's very, I suggest that, I use that I've used that a couple times. Clipboard, it'll copy the geometry to your clipboard, like Control C, or if you're on a Mac, well, you can't use this on a Mac, but Command, Control, whatever your operating system. So that is the gist of move and copy. Pretty useful tools. So now let's go to rotate. I have a um, five sided polygon here that's a pentagon, and we're going to rotate it. So let's click on the rotate tool. We're gonna to wanna to select the geometry. Again, I can just click and drag or select each individual. Then I wanna select the center point that I want to rotate it around. So let's say I wanted to rotate it around itself. So I do the center point here and now I can rotate this wherever I wanted. I can click and do it or I can set a specific degree value in here. Now, again, the copy thing is here. The copy option is here. So I can copy that. I can keep both or I can move it just like we saw in the move and copy tools now, except it's in one tool. 
and we can also do the precise input for the center point. But if you have a point, you can just click. But let's say I wanted it here. Now I've done that, and that has been rotated. Now let's go to one of the most useful um, tools, and that is trim. So what trim does, as you would think, is it trims off excess stuff. So let's say I just wanted this line to not continue going and to stop at this line. Well, I can trim by clicking there, and you'll see the little um, dashes. That means I'm sniffing, snipping off that part of the line. And as you can see now, that part of the line is completely gone. I can do the same for that and any other things that I would want to trim off. So trim is one of the more useful tools that you will be using. Con continuing on, we have extend here. So now these, there are no pop-up window. So, but it's okay because basically what extends does is it extends a line. I don't, let's say I want to extend this line. One way to the, to the next closest geometry. So there's nothing this way. The next closest geometry to this line is this line. So if I use the extend tool, I can extend this line down to there. And it's not, it doesn't necessarily have to be lines either. It can be, well, actually, yes, it does have to be lines, but it doesn't have to be lines that you have to extend the line to, is what I'm trying to get at. Okay, now you'll see this line is extended here. And then with split, let's go on to that. Split's kind of different here, but let's talk about this first. We have a circle with a line inside. Let's say we wanted this arc to be separate from this arc of the circle. We can split, and we're going to want to click the circle. It sees the two points in there. And now if we press OK, these two, or this, is now separate from this. And it doesn't have to be necessarily a line that's embedded inside of the circle. Let's do it with this circle out here. It'll still do that and that. And now we have two separate arcs with the same center point still, but they're now two separate arcs if you wanted to do whatever, if you wanted that for some reason. But, all right, let's go on to scale now. So what scale does, as you would probably imagine, is it... By a scale factor, it will increase or decrease your geometry. So this looks a lot like the move and copy tool now. We're going to select our geometry there. We're going to want our base point. I made this in a center on purpose so that we can use the um, center point here. And now it says the existing dimensions placed on the geometry may restrict the intended operations. And we're going to, going to want to relax these of course, because we are because we don't want it to be 1 and 0.5 again. We are increasing this by a scale factor. So now here, you can put your scale factor in here. You can do a precise input, or you can just click in there. And that is basically how to use scale. We can select any center point we want. But what we noticed, let's do this, point. But what we noticed about scale here is it doesn't save the other one, even if we wanted to. There's no option for copy. Even if we go here, there's no option for copy. So let's finish that. And we're going to use a tool called offset a bit later. And you'll see how that kind of works as the scales copy. So let's go to stretch. So we have another rectangle here. So now what we want to do, or what stretch does basically, is as you would think, it stretches certain lines. So let's say we want to stretch this line and this line. Now let's select our base point. Let's do the base point here. And we're going to remove those constraints so that we can stretch this however we want. You'll see it's no longer a rectangle anymore. It's kind of like this odd shape there. Again, you can do a precise input as well. But that is the gist of the stretch tool as well. So let's now go to offset, which is also a very useful tool. 
So offset, there's no pop-up menu, but it automatically finds this enclosed geometry here and it offsets it. So I click on the geometry and now we can offset it either this way, this way, wherever we want in there. And these will automatically be equal. So let's say I wanted this and this to have a point one five or I wanted them to be 0.15 away. Now the whole thing, this whole thing here is 0.15 away from this one. So it's kind of like scale, but with um, copy in a sense. So you, you may use one tool for something, you may use the other tool for something. And we went over these nine modify tools in this video, and I hope you'll be able to find use with those modify tools based on the examples we gave in the video. And that's going to be it for this video. So from all of us here at Fierce Fish, we hope you have a great day.